Well, hi there. These are African fat-tailed geckos, which come to us from TK Critters. And we'll have links to them down in the description. But these amazing geckos are some of the more overlooked reptile pets. That isn't because they're not easy to find, but because they are so much more rare than a very similar gecko, the leopard gecko, which happens to be the highest scoring lizard that we have ever scored on this channel. So why is the African fat tail so much less common? Is there something wrong with them? Or is it a bit of an undiscovered gem? To help you figure this out, we're going to need to score the African fat-tailed gecko based upon our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about these amazing geckos. African fat-tailed geckos are part of the same family of geckos as the leopard geckos, Eublepharidae. This family is frequently referred to as the eyelid geckos because they, unlike most geckos, have movable eyelids and can blink. In addition to movable eyelids, this group is also identifiable by their lack of adhesive toe pads, which are common in other geckos. These are overwhelmingly ground-dwelling geckos. In addition to fat-tailed geckos and leopard geckos, this group also includes cave geckos, banded geckos, and a few other groups that we still need to cover in the future. Sometimes people express concern that we're running out of animals to cover, but we could easily spend the next few years talking only about gecko species that you could possibly get that we haven't covered yet. Heck, we haven't even covered Mediterranean house geckos, and they're all over the world. But getting back to Eublepharidae, this is a rad family that includes some amazing geckos. But it's hard to say that any are more rad than the African fat-tailed gecko. Like many members of this family, they have fat tails. This fat storage allows them to survive for extended periods of time with limited food and or water availability. I had a leopard gecko loose in my house for months that eventually turned up with a skinny tail, but alive and well. Thanks for finding him, Leisha. They're generally banded with or without a white dorsal stripe, though many cool and beautiful morphs are also available, such as this stinking red Oreo morph which, you know, is probably some form of azanthism, just looking at it. I don't see any yellows on there at all. Definitely not albino, though. Got lots of black. If you want to know more about that, we've got an awesome video all about reptile morphs, so check that out. They're also just a bit stockier in general than leopard geckos, or really most of the other members of the family. So let's talk about handleability. The reality is that fat-tailed geckos are very similar to handle to their more popular cousins, the leopard geckos, and those get a four out of five for handleability. That means that they're good, but not great to handle. The good is that they can be handled. They are generally pretty calm, perhaps even more so than leopard geckos, though I have encountered grumpy fat-tailed geckos in the past which is actually part of why it took us so long to film this video. I didn't want to show you grumpy fat-tailed geckos. They feel really nice, and though you will feel the claws, and, uh, you know, those might be a bit disconcerting to some, a calm fat-tailed gecko is really unlikely to hurt you. But there are some reasons that lizards like this are not my favorites to handle. First, being a terrestrial gecko, they're not great at holding on to you. This means that you're primarily responsible for preventing falls. They're also relatively small and delicate. These are pretty bulky geckos, but I wouldn't trust them with most children as they could easily cause the lizard extreme harm. And they can drop their tails. That tail is an important energy resource for them, so they won't do it willy-nilly, but they can do it whenever they want to. And though it will grow back, it grows back looking like uh, sort of a partially inflated water balloon. Also, for a gecko, they can bite hard. Uh, and, and don't be shocked if this happens occasionally. This is no toke bite, but you will definitely know that it's happening. Long story short, they have all of the same pros and cons of their cousins and also get a four for handleability. When it comes to care, we give the African fat-tailed gecko a score of four out of five. There are only really two cons. First, they eat insects. This is at least a mild inconvenience for most people and a deal breaker for others. But for an insect-eating lizard, 
they don't eat very many. Second, picking a substrate can be difficult due to the risk of accidental ingestion and difficulty shedding on their toes. But I will say that this is a bit less of an issue for these guys than for leopard geckos because their toes are a bit thicker and they require a bit more humidity. You see, leopard geckos come from the desert. And when I say this, many people think sand. But I've lived most of my life in the desert, and I can tell you that most deserts are not sandy wastelands. I can also tell you that there are damp, humid places even in the desert. And fat-tailed geckos come from less desert, savanna-type habitats, grasslands. And like leopard geckos, they spend most of their time down in a humid burrow, not wandering around in the sun on sand dunes. What I'm saying is that neither of these geckos should be kept on sand, and it's even more absurd for these geckos than for leopard geckos. So what is the best substrate? Well, for safety, probably paper towels. But that is a pretty lame substrate if you want a naturalistic look. So if you want a naturalistic look, I would recommend something like a blend of sand and eco-earth. And yes, I said sand, but the eco-earth will hold moisture and the sand will allow it to compact and hold a better shape. There is a risk of this being ingested, so feeding in a bowl or in another enclosure might be a good idea. I would like to find a better substrate still, so if you have suggestions, please throw them in the comments. I've actually been playing with something for a long time now that I will probably unveil sometime soon. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss that when I feel it is ready to show off. For an enclosure, I recommend something that favors ground space over height. Toad Ranch and Zen Habitats have some great options, and there are many others as well. You're going to need a small water bowl, something they can easily access and get out of. Uh, they don't need to swim, and they aren't very good at it. Some hides, particularly a humid hide, will be very much appreciated and will help with that toe shedding. And you should probably provide these on both the warm and cool end of the enclosure. And I would provide heat with a heat pad on a thermostat. Be sure that heat is available on one end, but that the other end is considerably cooler so they can thermoregulate. Being a nocturnal gecko that spends the day in a burrow, you can get away without using a UVB light, but studies with leopard geckos have shown considerable benefits to exposure to low-intensity UVB at dawn and dusk, so I would recommend it. As for insects, a diversity is best, dusted regularly with vitamins and calcium, which should also be available in like a little bowl for them to consume as they need it. Dubia roaches, crickets, and beetle larvae like mealworms and superworms are great staples. I would recommend that you house your geckos alone unless you're breeding them or you just love balloon tails and dead geckos. This is particularly true for males. When it comes to hardiness, we give the African fat-tailed gecko a score of 5 out of 5. The fact is that there aren't many more hardy lizards on the planet. That is, except for their size. You could hurt one very badly or even kill one because they're somewhat small and delicate. But they're built to go a long time without food or water. They're tough little geckos. Just keep an eye on their feet so they don't lose any toes from retained shed constricting them. When it comes to availability, we give the African fat-tailed gecko a score of 4 out of 5. The reality is that even though these are much less common than leopard geckos, they're out there. I do see them at pet shops. They will be at most expos, but expect to find only a few, not tables full of them next to tables full of them. They're definitely easy to find online from a breeder, and being such a hardy gecko, I wouldn't worry too much about having one shipped to you as long as the breeder knows how to do that, and most do. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the African fat-tailed gecko a score of 5 out of 5. These geckos are not super expensive. An appropriate enclosure can be purchased on a budget, though they will make use of bigger, more expensive enclosures as well. Substrate, a water bowl, hides, a heat mat and thermostat, and a low wattage UVB light on a timer are about all that you'll need. You will need a lid, but about any lid with ventilation will work. We have links to all of this in the description. And that is why, overall, we give the African fat-tailed gecko a score of 4.4 out of 5, which is a bit lower than a leopard gecko, but only because they're a bit harder to find. But in my perspective, uh, that's actually why I would get a fat-tailed gecko instead of a leopard gecko. It's cool that this is a bit less common of a lizard. I talked about that when I talked about clown agamas. 
Heck, we have whole videos about the best uncommon pet reptiles for beginners, and this could totally be on one of those lists. If what you want is essentially a leopard gecko, but you want to keep it a bit more humid, and you don't want it to be a leopard gecko, then the African fat-tailed gecko might be the perfect pet lizard for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, there's a little tail waggle. Oh, that was what he was going to take off. I thought he might fly away for a second there. No, he's about to take flight. <laughs> you, my friend, have a spider in your hair. Sometimes that happens, people. What the heck? What the heck? What the actual heck? Where do you keep spiders? Whoop, there he goes. Hey, buddy. Sorry. We had a good thing. You act like you've never kept a spider in your hair before in your life. Miss, I sleep with alligators. <laughs> <laughs>